Love Line, coast to coast. Hey, everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew is a board certified physician, an addiction medicine specialist. I'll be Nero for the night. I know, <laughs> I know Drew is uh, hungry, and uh, it was funny in, in uh, classic Love Line tradition. Tara, don't call me Tara, the phone screener, just had, Drew asked for some nuts. I think we were out of them. She just held up a one of those sort of almost clear keg size yeah. things of pretzels. Yeah. You know, you buy them at the uh, Price Club right. or the Smart Final Iris. It's the, you know, it holds 300 pretzels. Yeah. She held the one up. I don't think there was uh, half a pretzel in there. I mean... If you if we broke it all down and poured it into a pretzel mold, I think we could get a pretzel and a half out. But there was like, you know what you know what ends up at the bottom of the pretzel jar? Yeah, that's what she was showing us. It looks like somebody backed over a pretzel container and then dumped the uh, scraps. Who <laughs> cares? <laughs> that's not going to do for you, Drew. No, not tonight. All right, all right, there. I remember when pretzel remnants were good enough for you, Drew. There was a time, I suppose. Yeah. There yeah. was a time. And by the way, here's uh, here's how you know you've really arrived. You stop finishing off food by holding the sack to your mouth and hitting the bottom of it. I used to fi- I used to finish everything in, in two ways. I would either lick whatever paper the burrito or the burger became wrapped in or scrape it off with my nail. Or just turn the sack of Fritos over, and if there's nothing in there, I still, if I give it a little whack on the bottom, I could get a little powder. Sure. Maybe some MSG and a little salt would fall into my mouth. But a psychological victory. Yeah. Now, I just eat the whole ones. And then the half ones. I don't go smaller than half. That yeah. that means you've arrived. <laughs> Alex? Yeah. You're 15. Yeah. Can What's I up? Go, uh, my girlfriend gave me a hand job, and uh, about an hour after that, and until... And uh, it's been going on until today. Uh, my left testicle has been hurting. Every time I take a leak, uh, it burns. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Burning. Uh, it, it hand job. Irritated. Urethra. Yeah. Urethra. Was she extra, extra vigorous? Yeah, a little, yeah. She was too, too aggressive. Did, it, did huh? it take a little while? No, no. Normal. She just went pretty hard and fast. Yeah, all right. Well, You guys in a hurry? Had to make a movie? Did you ask her to maybe slow down a little bit? No, nah, we were both kind of... In the mood, you know. Yeah, y- your mood was a total shock that somebody was giving you a hand job. You wouldn't want to destroy the moment by speaking up, right? But it is a guy. First off, you feel no pain when you have an erection, oh, and you have a woman latched on your honker at fifteen. And number That's two, the point. he's in shock. But number two, as a guy, it's like as a guy when you're driving with someone, you don't you don't want to say slow down, right? You seem That's like right. a puss. That's right. You don't want to say slow down to anything. Ooh, Drew oh, got himself some nuts and a oh couple God, sacks of, uh, of uh, triscuits. And, oh, this. this is great. This huh. big score. I'll trade you all that for these almonds all right, right here. All right. All, right. all right. All right. So maybe he irritated the urethra. So what should he do? Well, and then what happens is the sometimes that inflammation gets down into the epididymis and you get an epididymitis on top of that. So that is something that may need to be treated. You might just try some anti-inflammatory, some Advil or some over-the-counter, see if it takes care of it. But if it doesn't, it is important that you see a urologist. It's not like you're going to get an STD from a hand job. No, I know that. Yeah, but you do get, you can get symptoms like that and can get uh, urethritis from the mechanical irritation and then can get what's called epididymitis. What's uh, the technique, Alex? Is it a full fist technique? Yeah. Nice. That means you got something to work with. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, Mr. Personality over there, by the way. Why is it all the guys who are uh, void of a personality get the most hand jobs? You know, the, in high school. At the youngest age. <laughs> yeah. Here, it's like uh, um, you have a small vocabulary, you're sort of abrupt, you have no real personality, you're a little antisocial. God will repay you with a hand job, possibly oral sex. Well, what kind of justice is that? Okay. He'll be fine. Take an Advil. See what see how it feels in a couple days. Yeah, and then see someone if it's not getting better. All right, Jake. Yeah, you're 18. What's up? Um, I have um uh, an extra hole above my anus. It's about oh I don't know like two inches I guess, and um there's a bump there's a bump to the left side of it. Right. That when I push on it hard enough, sometimes Some, something comes out of it. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, and blood as well. My, that's called Sweet. a It's called a pilonidal cyst. Okay. 
Okay. And they can get become abscessed. They can be a real mess, and they need to be surgically removed. They don't get better by themselves, typically. Good right. times. I've uh, had it for a long time. Have yeah. you ever had somebody look at it? Yeah, I had um, this orthopedist look at it, but, I mean, he yeah. said it was topical and I could have it removed, but it wasn't a big problem. He told you it's a pilonidal cyst, right? He didn't say it. He just said it was topical. True. Is there, you know, for auto body work, they have something called Bondo. Yeah. It's like a two-part, a catalyst, and a uh, resin. What about filling it up with something? I think well, I'm going to skip that. Right well, you know what the interesting you could do is there are glues now, you know, glues for, for body parts. As opposed to suturing. Shit. No, you, 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 they, can, they can actually, one of the things some surgeons might do is put something down the cyst, tract, right. slice it open, and then... Glue it shut? They wouldn't glue it shut, though, because that tends to cause it to reform. They, they let it heal from the inside out. And, uh, yeah, it, it's got to be. It's going to stay there until you get it taken out. So. Okay. Well, that must be... Uh, whatever comes out of there must have a, uh, a funk all yeah. its own. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, does it? Yeah, it's got a little bit of a smell to it. Not a little bit. bit. <laughs> Called putrid. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what I love about the body is it manufactures such a wide variety of smells. Yeah. You got your urine smell, you got your ass smell, you got your underarm smell. And just that you, you've you even been... got your like earwax smell, but you got that whole thing then from another planet, which is that under the sack, that sweaty ball smell. You've been deprived of some of these things too, huh? Some of the smells? You don't smell. I'm not a big smeller, but uh, you, you want to uh, get in touch with my sack after a long day. Oh, really? Yeah, you're going to find something That's where there. it all goes, huh? Yeah, it does come out there, yeah. Thank you. Totally different than what's going on under the armpits, by the way. But would never mistake the two for the same. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, 500 times worse, but yeah. That's right. Hobo. Hobo times, uh, <laughs> hobo factor. Six hobo power. <laughs> oh, power. That's right. Uh, you know, uh, Drew and I haven't discussed this for a long time, but one of the things we stumbled onto uh, earlier on in our careers is that there was no way of measuring stink. Right. No, no stinko, stinko meters. Stink right. Units of stink. Right. And, and, you know, they have a way to measure just about everything, but not really the stinkometer. And there's no, not even really a name for it. No. And so we uh, were talking once, and I think a guy said this uh, chick smelled like a hundred hobos <laughs> between her legs, and we decided we should come up with uh, the hobo factor. Hobo power. Hobo power. Is horse power? Hobo, hobo power, power yeah. yeah. And hobo, you know, power six, power to ten, <laughs> yeah. power to Twelve 15. hobo power. Yeah, what, I don't know what the highest would be. 300 hobo power. Whoa. 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 That's a high performance right. hobo. Yeah. Tara? Yes? You're uh, 18? Yes, sir. What, what's up? You're depressed? Um, No. Um, Sunday morning, like at about uh, 1 a.m., maybe midnight, I don't know, I don't really remember, I was attacked and almost raped by this drunk guy that I was trying to help. Hang on, this Sunday? Yeah. Just a couple days ago, all right. Yeah. Okay. That was and, yes, yesterday, wasn't it? Sunday? Today, yeah, Monday? It was. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, this happened yesterday. Mm hmm. Where were you trying to help him? Well, we were on the beach with, with some friends, and he lost his friends. He couldn't find them, and he said he didn't know where he lived. So um, this girl and I were like, okay, well, we see some on the pier, so we'll walk you down there, and we'll see if we if that's them. And it ended up not being them, and he, like, drug us down to the water where he proceeded to, like, kiss us. And He, he dragged you down to the water? Yeah. Both of you? Yes. How did he, how did he hang on to you? Like, by her arm. She's really strong. Huh. Okay. Wow. Okay. So, I dragged both you toward the water? Mm hmm And was there any lifeguards or anything? Oh, no. It was, like, at 1 o'clock in the morning. Pitch black. Oh, I see. Oh, I didn't know it was that late. Okay. So, he dragged you down toward the water, and then what? And then, um, he, like, pulled us down into the water, and he was, like, trying to finger us and trying to kiss us and trying to get... Simultaneously, too. Yeah. One of you couldn't have gotten away when he was trying to finger you? Well, we were trying, but the waves were breaking pretty hard, and it was kind of hard to... Were, were you intoxicated? No. No, no. Wow. All right. I I, um, I know this is dramatic, but I know Drew and I also have some problems with this story. Okay. I mean, I, uh, but we'll get to those. And nothing's your fault, but how two girls, when he's trying to, like, finger you and stuff, don't you can't yeah, wait he's got to wash you... Hold with one hand. Can one and person get running one direction or another? Well, 
we were kind of smacking him away and we didn't want I didn't want to leave him with her because he could have like, accidentally drowned her or raped her or something alright All right, so somebody was standing watching the other alright that makes sense now alright so then what so we finally drug him out of the water and stupid dumbasses we were we didn't want him to drown yeah. for some reason so we got him out of the water and we got him walking again and he stopped and he fell down and um, he pulled my friend on top of him and they were like rolling over and I pushed him off and my friend and her friend came and he like intimidated him because he's a huge guy and he walked away and then we got in the car and then we reported it to the police. Okay. That's good. All right, that's good. And you're, you know, you, and you're still not feeling right right now, is that right? No, I'm not. Yeah, I mean, it's normal to have a post-traumatic stress reaction after something like that. Uh, that's pretty yeah. that's pretty hairy. And thank God you made it through sort of unscathed and uh, you learned something from it. But, yeah, you're going to not sleep right and have a little anxiety and uh, startle more easily and maybe even get a little depressed for a couple of days. Sure. Because my mom said it was my fault. It was something that I did. Oh, that makes you feel much better, huh? And when I came home, she didn't even ask me if I was okay. She just looked at me and said that I was a whore and that I should have got raped and that if I did I would have deserved it. Oh my, what's with your mom? Well, she makes some points and let's, let's not be hard. Well, your, how's your dad in all this? He hasn't talked to me. He won't talk to me. Uh, to me, this, the whole situation seems sort of, th this isn't even victimization. It's sort of normal, naive 17, 18 year old stumbling around trying I, to figure something out. I understand that, yeah. but l let's get a little backstory. Did your mom say, don't go to the beach, or you shouldn't have been there at night, or what were you doing drinking at the beach at 1 a.m.? Or was whatever she trying to make some, some other point, is what Adam's saying? Well, she said that I shouldn't have gone to Clearwater Beach because she says that the only reason why you'd go there is to get laid, but that's not why we well, went. You and I went there together. Yeah. Clearwater Beach? Uh, uh, Cornhole Drew. It was great. <laughs> but we were there? That place with the peanuts. Remember we ate peanuts and threw... Remember that place? That was by the water? What the hell was that? Oh, yeah. We were in Florida. Yeah, yeah. we're in Clearwater. Yeah. yeah, I tried to rape Drew. I wouldn't have any of it. See, I, I fought him off while he tried to finger me. All right. <laughs> tried. Smell me. Tara? Yeah? Okay. I, I'm sorry for what happened. And I'm sorry that your parents are sort of insensitive. And um, I'm sure there's a little more backstory here with maybe you defying them a little bit in general. Them not being real happy with your grades and well, your defiance and that kind of stuff? It's not really that. It's, well, maybe, because they've yeah. kind of sheltered me my whole life. And right. That, that, that's what I there. get. That's what I get, is that you, you really been so sheltered, you don't have the judgment to right. know a problem when you see one. And to then to get yourself out of one. And then to kick the, you know, really really defend yourself properly against an intruder. Well, she now, did a decent she job. She did a decent job, though, when the day was done. And I... I uh, your parents obviously are very anxious. They love you very much, and this is ha this is their own fear. Yeah, Unfortunately, I don't know about very much with the horror. Well, it's time, harming man. her, and it's it's un it's really pathetic and sad. And oh. I, I would certainly tell your parents how much that hurts, how, how painful, and how destructive their their feelings are. I'll also, not to uh, deny anything, any part of your story, but uh, here goes. <laughs> uh, women, especially guys, do this too. But uh, please uh, tell me I'm right here, Drew. Because I had a pain in the ass, troubled sister myself, used to get in all kinds of trouble. They hear feelings. They take feelings and they translate them into into words. Oh, your sister does. Yeah. My sister yeah. did this all growing up. A lot of our young female callers do this. Guys don't do it too much. Not like so you're much. saying, geez, you, you were, you were uh, assaulted at the beach. Your mom called you a whore? No. I'll bet you what mom said is, is uh, you shouldn't have I been there. I told you not to go there. I told you yeah. not to go. Uh, she didn't say it's your fault. Yeah. She said, I warned you about going to those places yeah. at night with these guys. The people and the that kind go there element. are whores. Was probably the word whore was not yeah. brought up. But probably there was some... They made it part, part made them partially responsible, and that's what they heard. Yeah. You yeah. whore, it's your fault. Well, yeah, why don't you ask? Just out of curiosity. Just, just, All right. Maybe she can be restricted about that. Tara? Mm -hmm. Did she use the word whore? Well, not exactly. Okay, All right. okay, there we Thank, go. You. Thank you. Liar, what? liar, whore, liar, whore, and you know it. What must it be like for me to be right almost all the time? Think about that, Drew. Well, what I hate is that... She just got done saying her mom called her a whore. Yeah. And I, just, uh, based on nothing, said, no, she didn't call her whore. Yeah. And she said not in those words. And could have very easily said, yes, she did. Yeah, could have. Uh, yeah. It's got to be tough. It's a burden. 
this. But now, now we're gonna have, now we're gonna have twelve callers calling. Now so we're you not. were hard on that girl. How dare you? You you know all the time, huh? Oh sure, Mister Smart. You know, no, on. listen. I'm glad nothing bad happened to her. Yeah. I do know there's something going on with her and defying her parents, and I don't like her uh, hanging around. Well, here's the deal. Out. She is steeped in shame. Her parents have shamed the hell out of her because they haven't given her a chance to individuate properly. And now this is the price of that. This is this is eating disorderville. All right, she's eighteen. Go off to college. Yes, absolutely. Sheila. Yeah. You're fifteen. Mm-hmm. What's up? Well, I have a problem. I kind of have a couple of questions. One for you because you talk a lot, mm-hmm. and the other one for Doctor Drew. All right. I'll start with Doctor Drew because he's quick and easy. Um, Doctor Drew, mm-hmm. um, I'm going to be playing football with boys. Mm-hmm. What kind of safety precautions? Should I know about or take care of? From the standpoint of playing with guys. Well, I listen. Uh, th- it's not fair for me. To, I, I'm not a trainer of female no. contact football. No, athletes. And she just wanted to talk about playing with guys. So yeah. let's talk about that. No, no. I want to know, like, if I should. I, I know of no special other other than obviously appropriate gear. And your trainer should be able to help you with that. Well, here's the way I look at it. You have breasts. Uh huh. And, and a lot of guys focus on that. Hey, we need to bring it back. Hey, I got a well, set of I, I got a set of breasts position. between my legs. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You got more than that. You got more than that. So you get to avoid that whole uh, need in the groin yeah. aspect of the game. Yeah. What what position are you playing? Linebacker. Uh, why? Why? Because I want to. You ever I, played before? No, this is my first year. I'll be on the JV team. You've never played football before. Well, what well, do you I think she played, played? I played other sports before. Probably, was there a Pop Warner that girls can play and everything? Mm-mm. I mean, <laughs> hold on. I can't be guy eating. No. They could play. They just never do. Yeah. Well, All right, so you're going out for the JV I mean, team. 15 being a female going out to football the first time. That, that's, that's heavy duty. Yeah. Oh, but it'll be novelty. I played, I played both soccer and softball before. Yeah, and I'm contact catcher, football. Hey, listen, softball. football's a whole different deal. Listen, Sheila, it, it, it is a different deal. I don't talk around. No, I don't talk around. I just prepare yourself. It is a different deal. I yeah. understand that. The coaches mm-hmm. are nice. My team players are... No, I think it's cool. I think it's... Yeah. Listen, I don't discourage you. I just want you to prepare. This is going to be a different experience and I, I, I you know, want to get a hurt. Yeah. That makes me uh, think back to my high school playing days. Hey, me too. All North Central Hollywood. Valley first team. North Hollywood Hunt. Thank you very much, your linebacker. Thank you. So what's up? You want some pointers? Yeah. All right, let me tell you something. Listen, listen. Mm -hmm. Your head needs to be on a swivel. You hear me? Yeah, that's what my coach says. That's right, on a swivel. And and moving side to side, lateral speed. And here's, are you playing inside or outside backer? Um, I'm shooting for outside. Contain, contain, contain. (laughs) Yeah. Hmm? Okay, here, here's what, here's my tip. This is going to help you a lot, whether you're inside or outside backer. Uh-huh. you got to read wherever they're trying to block you. And that's what my teacher said. If you're playing inside linebacker and that guard is supposed to block you and the ball snapped and he's not coming out after you, it's a pass. You go, yeah. And if he pulls to the right, you better pull to, the, to the, your left or go to the right, too, because that's a sweep and that's where the play is going. Throw him down. This no matter what goes on out there... You can read it by and, and and one last thing. Yes. Especially if you're playing uh, middle middle backer. Oh, I hope not. You got to step up. You can't wait for them to get what, to you. That is the, what is that about the, the great linebackers? They don't just step up. They like like a strike. They like they like it can all of a sudden like like a blazer band. Took me a long time to figure that out. Yeah. Which is if they're coming right at you. And you're staying your ground five yards, six yards they, behind they, the line of scrimmage. Got six yards. You're waiting for the guard yeah. to get to you. Yeah. You'll get the guard. You'll get the fullback. Yeah. And you'll get the halfback all about the same time. It'll all be six yards. If that guard fires out at you, you better fire up at him and clog that hole. And if you're playing outside backer, don't bite on that uh, first fake before yeah. the quarterback kicks out and goes around you. What do you mean by bite? Uh-oh. The first, the first contact. Okay. The quarterback will do that fake. Fake the dive right through the two hole. You'll you'll turn in on it, and then he'll go around you. He'll yeah. pitch it out. I you got contained. Somebody will somebody will crack back on you. All right, right. all right. That you have wheels on you. What's your forty time? What's my what? Oh uh, oh um, I can run a mile. Whoop <laughs> noob nope. Well, I haven't gotten that time yet. All right, all right, all right. All right. Well, that'll be good. You make the papers. Are you a lesbian? Um, jeez, no. No. That's my question. Okay. What's the question? My question is, should I... Should you date any of the, date any of the guys? I, date? I mean, like, guys talk. 
You're a lesbian. Talk, of course. <laughs> True, play. Are you playing ball to meet the guys? What? Are you, are you? Do you want to meet the guys on the team? Is that part of the reason you play ball? Kind, no, not. I don't. Hey, yeah, that's that's fine. If that's I'm right. not like one of those guys that go into home ec just to be with chicks. Right. Okay. Okay. I'm. Um, because that's why a guy would play a girl sport, woman yeah. sport. Yeah. Sure. My question is, would it be kind of weird if I date other guys while being on the football team? No, that, that's like saying, would it be weird for them to date other girls? Well, we mean girls. It's a different yeah. Wait a minute. She means girls. She means guys on the football team, right? Yeah, but I'm a girl on the football team dating mm -hmm. another guy. Right. Well, listen, Sheila. Yeah. I want you to try as hard as you can. I want you to give it your best effort. At, this, but, at which? But listen, you'll be riding the pine. <laughs> what? So don't worry about that. The football thing is not going to be a big thing in your life. What? That's uh -huh. my that's my prediction. I hope it works out. Give it every effort. It'll build some character and date whoever you want, football team or not. Right. She just wanted to talk about trying out for the football team. She didn't have a real question. God bless her, though. Hey, good. Yeah. That's great. I'm fine with that. The only part I'm not fine about, as far as society goes, is if she sucks, they should be able to cut her. Yeah, that, I, just like a guy who yeah, sucks. I have the same thing with that. When I, if a guy had called in and I said, hey, man, you're going to have a tough time. You've gone from no, never playing football to now playing JV football. That's going to be tough. Because I said that to a girl... 5,000 people are offended. Right. Right. It's like, hey, it's just anybody going from not playing football to playing. That's going to be tough. Well, the thing uh, that they don't at 15 don't warn impossible. you about is you got to do some hitting. Yeah. You got used to using your head early on. Yeah. All right. And I and how old are your boys? Eight. Now it's time to have them start learning to use their head. Uh -huh. They start using that head like a battering ram. Start hitting guys. Spearing, crank yeah, They already do, strangely enough. Good. Yeah. Toughen up that skull of theirs. Yeah. And work for me. Look at me. <laughs> All right. We'll take a little break. When we come back, speak to Michelle. She's uh, pushing her girlfriend away. He goes out and works. She cries. Uh -oh. You want to do that? You want to do something different? Nah. We'll do it real fast right. after this. Everybody. Love line. Got to love the love line. <laughs> Phone number. Got to, got to. Got to, got to, got to, got to love the love line. I'm Adam. That's true. Phone number 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. All right. We lost that call. We were promoting. Oh, we did? Yeah. Oh, big whoop. John? Hey there. You're 16. What's going on? Uh, first of all, you guys are awesome. Thanks, Thank John. you. Well, um, a friend of mine just got some mushrooms. Yeah. And, uh, well, I've never done any drugs before. Mm -hmm. but, Why uh, start with mushrooms? I don't know. That's not a bad place to start. Uh, that's that's a drug. That's a classic. It's a vintage drug. 16. That's your dad's drug. Sixteen. Well, yeah. uh, anyway, I was just wondering any side. <sighs> mm. We don't know, uh, and not not that I've seen, but we're expecting to see. It, it, it doesn't seem to be a whole lot with the mushrooms, Sean. Well, there's a couple. Here's a couple of things. Not after just a couple of exposures. But let me let me uh, let me float this. You could get high on mushrooms and fall off a cliff yes. while you're camping. Yes, you could. Or you could have a reaction. I mean, you could have like a psychotic reaction. You have yeah. PTSD you could, from you, it. You could spaz. Yeah, pretty bad. Can but I like what, mm, no. I've never seen that. But whether you could damage the brain the way you can with other yeah. hallucinogens yeah. is sort of probable, but the jury's out still. Look, uh, the, the jury is never coming in on this one. Because because, nobody uses enough of it. Yeah, everybody I know, well, I shouldn't say everybody I know, quite a few people I know have done their fair share in their youth, and none of them seems to be the worst for wear. Oh, my God, you're talking about your friends? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you, Drew? No, listen. And Drew loves to pin everything to addiction and substance abuse and all that. But the friends of mine that are furthest behind and the most effed up didn't do any mushrooms at all, by the way. Not that there's any correlation between uh, achieving uh, success in life and doing mushrooms. But the more successful ones actually did do the mushrooms, financially. Mm. I'll uh, I'll give you all the names off the air, Drew. Okay. You'll, you'll be delighted. Think where they'd be if, you, if they hadn't done them. You think my buddies like Ray and Zeb must have done mushrooms in order to not be where they're not right. today? Right. No, those were the two that wouldn't do any. Everyone else did them. Hey, John? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I know it's not this show. You know, I'll, I'll tell you, I have mixed feelings about telling a 16-year-old to go ahead and do drugs. 
But we're trying to keep it real on this show. And mushrooms are more benign than a lot of drugs. And well, less benign. Drugs, drugs in general are not a great thing to get into. They're not good for you, yeah. But this probably ain't going to kill you. But it, oh, it's, it's 16. I hadn't done mushrooms and wasn't thinking about it. Is there any addiction related to it? No. no. Doesn't seem to be. Not really. How old's your friend you're going camping with? 16. Uh huh. Is he, is he experienced mushroomer? Um, I think he's done it a couple times. All right. So the other thing, too, is you, you could spin out a little. It's nice to have a steady hand nearby. Yeah. And just start with a little bit. So. Okay. Uh, just for the record, don't take any. What the hell? <laughs> yeah. It's not a bad one, though. I'll tell you, mushrooms. That's, uh,. That's good times. I did a daytime radio show today, and I was, uh, you know, talking. And some guy calls him and goes, how dare you tell a young 24-year-old who found something in her breast that it's not breast cancer? And started yelling at me. I thought, what are you talking about? It's so bizarre what people take issue with. Well, he, I'll tell you the problem with um, the media and our job and everyone's job. Everyone's job is to cover their ass. Right. So everyone who calls this show, we say... That's bad. Don't do it. Well, we also see a doctor to everybody. It's maybe, we say, no, uh, but, but what a lot of radio shows will do is they'll go, look, drugs are bad. Don't do drugs. Well, on this radio show, we're a little more realistic. We understand there's a distinction between mushrooms, heroin, crank, weed, booze. There's a difference mm -hmm. in all of those. Mm -hmm. And we're going to approach it that way. It, it, it's uh, no different than any other thing in life. And if we start, you know, the day we start saying to people, look, don't do this or don't do anything, then we lose our credibility this, because this is also what we're you know what you're going to get. It's also what we were talking about last night, which is we're not, we are not going to tell anybody what to do or not do. I, it, drives me, it drives me crazy that they can't see what they're doing and where it comes from, and we're trying to help them see that. Yeah. But it's certainly not going to tell anybody what they must or must not well, do. Well, and I want to play the odds, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if if, if uh, one guy in the last million has died because he took mushrooms, and I'm going to tell you, hey, the odds aren't very great that anything bad's going to happen to you. Let's be face it. Francis? Hi. Hey, what's happening? Hello? Hey. hey. Hi. Go ahead. I can't believe I finally got through. Okay. Um, here's my problem. Um, my boyfriend, my first, like, real boyfriend, um, was um, basically busted for stealing one of my parents company vehicles nice and, yeah and um i know what i should do and i can't like i know i should step back and like have nothing to do with them and everything but i just kind of stick around for that well hang on now wait wait, wait, wait. Okay. it's not like this guy was you know uh george washington and then all of a sudden he stole something and therefore condemned no he's a bad guy he he's well, al always been a troubled guy yeah yeah he, um what else is up with him he, um, well, he's raised by his grandmother. He has a, um, he, yeah. a really horrible dad who's just coming to the picture now because nobody else wants his dad around. So he's thriving on that. Well, describe and, the guy to us. Is he? Um, he's really intellectually smart, but, um, he has a, a pretty high IQ, but he just, he's kind of lost. Like, he right. never. Well, how, old, he, how old is he? He's 19. Is he I'm aggressive? 18. Is he getting fights? No, he gets verbally abusive when he's drunk. Does he do a lot? Okay, so he drinks a lot, does drugs. Um, he's tried stopping a couple times the drinking thing, but okay. he doesn't do any drugs. Just the alcohol, really. All right, so he's a drug. He's an alcoholic. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, right. you're you're cruising for potential disaster here, Francis. Oh, oh, and I know that. And the thing is, I know I should like. You always talk about, there's, I guess, some book about, but I love him, and like yeah. that's exactly what my problem is. Yeah. Well, what what's your question? My question is, everybody tells me to leave him alone and, like, cut off all conversation with him, and I can't. All right. So what's your question? What am I supposed to do? Am I, like, I need some outside advice here of somebody that, because like, I respect your guys' opinion yeah. that I can't get mad at. Well, let's not be facetious and just tell her to cut off all contact with him, but um, your mom or dad is an alcoholic? No, um, my dad's a workaholic. My workaholic. Mom, my mom raised us. My dad just made sure there was money on the table. And, like, my relationships to look at aren't too steady of them. Um, so there's got to be some addiction in there somewhere. Nobody's uh, taking medicine, pharmaceutical. Uh, well, wait a minute. There's, there's actually, there's no addiction except Good. for the fact that my dad is always, always working. Well, let, let, I, I don't want to uh, dwell uh, on this too long. Uh, Francis, here's the deal. 
you try and be very conscious of the fact that you should not be talking to this guy. It's not going to be done all at once. No, no, no. That's not going to work. Just, well, not, yeah. No, no. She can do it. No. Then she'll find another one. Well, uh, hold on. But, Drew, we talk about this all the time. I know we like to break everyone off into their own little separate categories and everything. But there is the phenomenon, and it's a very accepted one, of young girls, 18-year-olds, yes. they like the dangerous guy. Yeah, absolutely, <clears throat> that's true. They had some nebbish guys working his ass off. They get hooked up with the rebel kind of guy. Yeah, that's true. Now she wants to get away from this guy. And she's having difficulty, but she seems to be <clears throat> cognizant of it. And I don't think she's going to... I don't see a, a, her marrying alcoholics right. and being beaten and all no. that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, now, all we have, of course, is our intuition when we're talking to these people. We've got a very, you know, couple of minutes to speak with them. But my sense was that she was more connected to him than she should have been. It wasn't just about getting involved with the danger of being connected to an alpha male. She's really emotionally invested in this, more so than she should be. And she knows that, and she's lost in that. And to disconnect from that... That's what codependency is. And I think she needs to go to Al Anon. I don't think it's going to happen without that. All right. You got a sponsor. You got to work some steps. And I believe that you'll find that your dad may have a little alcohol problem. You just don't see it because he's away all the time. All right. We will. Uh, you know what I did today, Drew? Can't wait. What? <laughs> I told my. Uh, Napped and masturbated. How dare you? Except for I've that. I've been working my ass off today. Yeah. I told my accountant, and this is my new thing, and I'd like to bring this one back. I suggest everyone listening does this, too. Mm. Um, you don't have to tell your accountant, but you just start working it into your everyday everyday uh, verbiage. Uh, I got something, and it said, uh, you know, compensated for the amount of, yeah. and then there was, you know, uh, four grand or something. I said, I wanted to start saying, to the tune of. <laughs> I think it sounds cooler, and it's one of these things that's going to die. On the score, to settle the score of four. Yeah. Yeah, um, how, how, uh, how'd you do uh, playing poker? Oh, I, I won. I won big. To the tune <laughs> of 900 To the tune of. Instead of saying to the amount of. Yeah. It's cooler. You guys who are listening, you got to keep that alive. You're a young generation. This is worn off. You probably, a lot of you people haven't even heard of this. Mm -hmm. You don't hear it brought up no, anymore, Drew. Nope. Everybody, to the tune of. <laughs> and then you put the price in. Uh, oh, yeah. And it's always good because it really, uh, oh, they find him. <laughs> oh, he won't be doing that again. Oh, uh, fine. Yeah, that NBA player. He was fined to the tune of 35000 to the tune of $35,000. Oh, big whoop. It's great. I'd like, to, I'd like you guys to keep that going, please. There's certain things that are going to die off. Drew, to the I, tune I, of? To the tune of. Mike? Yes. You're 17? Yes. What's up? Up much. All right. Have you called us about something? You 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 masturbate frequently? Uh, every once in a while, yeah. Uh, how often? Uh, I don't know. A couple times a week, maybe. No, no. To the tune of <laughs> three times a week. All right. All right. What's your question? Well, for about the past year, I've had, uh, every time I whack it, I've had, like, joint problems in my knees and stuff in my my fingers and all my joints to get inflamed. I've had a couple of knee injuries from sports, but it's been from these, from my knees and stuff being inflamed from the thing. And it's happened like I, every time I whack it, I know it's I'm positive that it's from from this because uh, sure? every time I did get inflamed after I whack it or something. Dude, you beat off. <laughs> what? Mm -hmm. uh, Mike, you need you need to see it. Forget the 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 whacking history. Just yeah. get up a doctor, take a look at the inflammation of the legs, okay? Well, it's I not related. Did, but, but I never, never told him that. that, that I don't think it's important. Are, are you, hey, Mike? Uh, you got some problems emotionally? No. You have, um, you're not taking, let's say, Ritalin to the tune of 750 <laughs> milligrams a day or something like that? No, it's a Gatorol. It's different. Oh, that's, that's the same thing. No, it's different. It's like. Yeah, I understand, but you have ADD. <laughs> yeah. You're supposed to go, how did you know that? As opposed to, no, you're wrong. Right. Yeah, I magically guessed uh, the uh, sister of the medication that he was on. Yeah, it could be related to the medication, although that would be kind of peculiar. It's not the masturbation. That's it, weird, it, obsessive thinking. And there, there are actually urethral irritations that can trigger joint complaints. But your your knees are not becoming inflamed because you're beating well, off, unless you're doing it in a praying position on a no, hardwood no. floor. Or, or something. if he's really irritating his urethra. Sometimes there's a cross reaction there. This is, this is all his joints are becoming in Urethritis and synovitis. Yeah. Twice a week to the tune of two wax a the, week? The, the tune of twice a week isn't quite right. But it, again, it needs to be sort of put together. Somebody needs to evaluate this carefully.
Yeah, but I, I think when you clear things up in the control tower magically, the uh, airport will start running that, better. The medication could be a problem, too. Okay, we'll take a break. Hey, everybody. It's a love line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is uh, Dr. Drew. Phone number to the tune of 1-800-LOVE-191. Right, Drew? That's the number. <laughs> Lizette? Hi. Hey, you're 16. Yeah. What's up? Well, for the past six months, I have had four boyfriends, and I have one right now. I've been sleeping with them, and I have had sex with them for, like, I don't know, a lot of times. And every time I have, like, sex with them, I give them blue balls every time we end up finishing. What do you mean? I give them blue balls. What is that? Know. What do you mean by that? I don't let them come in time or something like that. Oh, baby. I, yeah. uh, I smell some teenage pregnancy right around yeah. the corner for yeah. you, baby. What? What are you using for protection? Trojan. Yeah. What about, you yeah. know about the morning after pill? Mm? Do you know about emergency contraception? No. If, if something goes wrong with the condom or he doesn't put it on or it slips off, there's a pill you can take within three days and it prevents the pregnancy. It does? Yeah, so you make sure you get some what's called emergency contraception available, okay? The Easy. Thing is, the thing is that my parents don't know. Yeah. yeah, well. But they'll know if you get pregnant. Yeah, you still get that emergency contraception. You can get a Planned Parenthood, you can get it from any doctor. Where can I get it? Planned Parenthood. Or any doctor. Or any okay. doctor. Hey, Lizette. Mm? I'll talk to you about your prom, but you just promised me you don't have sex without birth control or protection. Okay. okay? No matter right. what. And yeah. you get that emergency contraception stuff so you don't get pregnant. I will. All right. Now, your boyfriend does not have an orgasm? No. How old is he? The same age as I am, 16. And You're he, fat. Drew, please. He never he never does? All the other guys didn't? Well, they have dumped me for the same reason. They dump you because yeah. they can't have an orgasm when they're having sex with you? Yeah. What do you think that is? What are you talking know. about? Listen, listen. I would have. I wouldn't have dumped a, a cadaver that uh, they were uh, that I fished out of a dumpster at UCLA when I was uh, sixteen. If I could have had sex with it, I beg your pardon. <laughs> you telling us too much? Oh, it was a little specific, wasn't it? Yeah, Shit, I got rid of her. Was that? Mm? Was it her? <laughs> You're. <laughs> How dare you? Well, what? the girls get loose when they die. Listen, mm. you're having intercourse with these guys. No. Nah. What are you? Ha what are you doing then? Hmm? Well, are they're you, doing it to me, uh, but I'm not doing it to them. Well, no, you said you, you were having sex with on, them. What are you doing? What are they doing to you? You know. No, we don't know. We weren't there. What? Well, you opened up by saying you were having sex with them, so that means intercourse. Yeah, I know, but other stuff. Not intercourse. No. So why is, you. <laughs> why is he using a Trojan if he's not having intercourse? No, wait, he is, but it's because I didn't hear you. I was listening to something else. All right. Hey, Lizette? Mm. All right, hang on one second, all right? Okay. All right. I can't, I, I can't, I was, that was so convoluted, we couldn't even do a reenactment on that. She used, try? what do you use for t protection? She no, we're having sex. What do you use for protection, right? Uh, listen, I'm, uh, I'm tired and angry. I've had an ass full of all you uh, kids who are got uh, one eye on the TV and one ear on this radio show. If you're, uh, don't, you know, this is a, national radio show don't waste our time with this huh what huh what no i wasn't listening what oh, i'm sorry i was paying attention to something else they keep repeating the same thing over and over again lizette stew in your own stupid juices for just some time until i feel like talking to you then we'll see because right now i'm being distracted by some other calls <laughs> okay and whenever i feel like it i will get back to lizette and lizette if you want to hang up Hang up now. No, I'd rather you... And if you don't want to hang up, hang on, but I may get back to you in two minutes, and I may get back to you in an hour and five minutes. But, but we'll think, compose your story. Just now, or don't. I don't care. Jennifer? Yeah? You're 21. What's up? What do I want? Um, I can't get wet. Huh. And um, I'm 21. I've been having sex since I was very young, 14. Huh. huh. And I love sex. I'm I'm a nympho. I have to have it like every day. <laughs> I say sometimes can't do it <laughs> because I want it so much. But um, wow, that sounds. Even wild. I've been to the doctor, and you know he just says maybe I'm not 
giving it enough time during foreplay or um, I just I don't know what to do. I use a lubricant called Wet right now. It's water based and it's spermicide. Yeah. It, it works great, but it just it kind of kills the moment, you know. Hang on, hon, let me go pump some lube. <laughs> well, let's talk about more what what's going on with you sexually. You, you're every day having sex. Well, yeah. Okay. Pretty much. Okay, and since you were fourteen. Well, yeah. Okay, and I, I mean, even if it, even if I wasn't with a man, I mean, I would be pleasing myself because I mean, ever since I was very young, I'm I'm bring myself to orgasm very easily and so even when you're having orgasm there's no no wetness i'm sorry even when you're ha having orgasm say by yourself no no lubrication no no only with a man afterwards i'll get wet for a little while but then i'll it'll tighten up and dry up again Ooh. and i've been with women before also sure I, I don't get i can't get wet with them either me neither Hey, Jennifer, <laughs> do you have one boyfriend right now? I'm engaged, yes. Oh, you are? Yes, sir. And oh. you guys are monogamous? Oh, very. Okay. And nothing with him either? Well, in the beginning of the relationship, but um, not, no, not anything anymore. Do you have any issues with sex? Has anything happened to you? Anything we should know about? I'm I'm sorry, what? Anything happened to you? Anything we should know about in terms of issues with your sexuality? Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Um, when I was young, like 14, 15, and 16, I had a lot of um, bacteria infections that my doctors said were caused from dancing a lot because I, I'm, a, I'm a ballerina. So uh -oh. they it, said that wearing tights and things of that nature. Yeah, I was told by my uh, gynecologist not to wear my unitard anymore. Well, you a lot of bacterial you growth. That. Hey, I look so goddamn hot in that thing. I said, I fire the guy. <laughs> Screw you. I look good in a unitard, mister. Hey, Jennifer, and uh -huh. leg warmers, by the way. Uh, ever have an eating disorder? No. Uh-uh. No? No. All right. And is, does your mom bust your chops? About what? The life, anything? No. Are you on birth control pill? Um, I was, but I recently went off them... And, well, that that was actually another reason that I, I switched for it from orthocycline, orthotricycline, was for to help my bacteria infections. And as soon as I switched the pill, um, it cleared up. But, 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 but have you been off birth control in many yeah. years? Yeah, Com not for many years, for about six months now. And it still hasn't changed or affected me being able to get wet. Mm -hmm. All right, let me, let me pick her brain for a second. All right. Da ballerina. Sexually compulsive. I got to get to the bottom of this. All right. Really? Now I'm not judging, but I'm just I'm, I'm trying to make I'm I'm trying to work my uh, files here so I can help humanity. I'm trying to follow follow some. No alcohol. Pads. Any alcoholism in the family? Yeah, um, my father's a recovering alcoholic. Okay. I mean, I don't see how that affects me getting wet. But oh no no! You're, listen, for women, uh, your brain is uh, hooked up to the spigot. Yeah. If there's stuff going on. There, there, look, and yet she arouses pretty normally, and she seems gratified by sex. You know, it's not, you know what I mean? She, yeah, but but we've we've talked to many women about this. Uh, uh, Anderson, you don't have a vagina anymore, do you? No, sewn up. But we we've talked to many people about this, which is if they're aroused, uh, and and if there's something going on emotionally, uh, they they. This can affect it. Yeah, I, but I don't, usually the arousal is interrupted, and sure, arousal is not interrupted. It's just this one element in arousal. But let me ask you this, Drew. Yeah. What if your brain is a little freaked out and turned off, but your sort of mind and body is saying, Moving push along. forward and almost overcompensating? I'm a very yeah. sexual person. Yeah, yeah. I'm very mean. sexual. Yeah. It's like the, the yeah. guy who's thinks he's a wuss so he becomes very aggressive yeah yeah she mm. she she reiterated over and over what a uh, sexual ask her. Ask her. person she and, was and yet she indeed is she has orgasms really easily right but maybe somewhere in uh, the uh, he, he, dark recesses so, of her mind she's not right. as sexual so, as she seriously thinks. she is someone who orgasms easily but maybe is not as sexual as she thinks I don't think I know she's not, or she would lubricate well, more. Well, and maybe she something would, biological. She say it as much. There, there may be some biological issue here. Well, that that's uh, I'd, I'd say it could be a number of factors, but I think that might be one of them. Jennifer. Yeah. What, uh, do, you, what do you think of Adam's theory? I'm sorry. Well, I don't. 
I don't know if I agree with that. Okay, good. <laughs> I mean, I think it, it's probably something biologically wrong with me. Because, yeah. I mean, I'm a, I'm a pretty happy person, and I yeah. have a great life. Yeah, and, and listen, the parents in recovery are good. Th- you, you can live a very happy life. When did your parents. dad get into recovery? I'm sorry? When did your dad get into recovery? Um... Right around the time I started having sex, actually. Where's my bourbon? Yeah, that you were like 14 or 15? <laughs> yeah. Was, was he an awful alcoholic when he was drinking? Oh, no. Yeah. No, I, didn't, I didn't live with him either. Who? Who would you live with? My mother. Is she kind of a perfectionist? Yeah. Uh, no, not at all, actually. What? Uh-uh. Who got you into ballet? She did. Why? I don't know. All right. People do that without, without, <laughs> without being intrusive. Does she? Do, your mom doesn't drink. Believe it or not, Adam. There is well, anyway, a back to the point. Well, now, listen. I don't. We don't know why you're not lubricating from a from a physiological standpoint. Let's finish up after the break. No, we're done with there. Well, I, I want to hear what. What other, are you going to say? I want to hear what other theories people have proposed. I mean, there's something wrong with the glandular activity down there. Usually, it, I, I wonder about her level of estrogenization. So, all right, so we'll be back. You. Hey, everybody. Love line. Phone number 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew. So, Drew, just tell that last call that wasn't lubricating medically what she can do. I, I just worry that she is not uh, cycling normally or perhaps has lower levels of estrogen or higher levels of progesterone than she should. So, certainly somebody should evaluate her very carefully. Uh, sometimes thyroid hormone can affect this. Sometimes... Uh, Boy, what about these old can't. infections she was getting? I don't think that has anything to do with it. And okay. I, and it's, it's not like she'd be deficient of glandular material down there. It's, I mean, I've never heard of that, though God knows there's every variation on anything when it comes to the human body. But mostly I suspect it's the hormonal influence that part of her body's under. Okay. And, and you're suspecting that the central, the brain is influencing that, and certainly it can. But you know, her arousal's good. She's okay. Dad's in recovery. Uh, arousal. Yeah. No well, hyper arousal, I'd say. No, a comp- a compensating self concept in terms of her sexuality, but the arousal, she has orgasm really easily. That's true. Mm-hmm. So she has to arouse to do that. Well, go to the uh, go to the gynecologist. Tell her you want a full workup. Yes. All right. Uh, Michelle. Hello. Oh, Michael. Michelle. How Where's are you, Michelle? Doing? What, Michelle. What's Michelle. your name? My, my my name is Michelle. You're the Francais. Oh, <laughs> Pansy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Adam. I have a question for you. All right. And then Doctor Drew is is the one. Um, Adam, I masturbate upside down in the bathroom with my to- toe in my dog's butt. Do, do you think anything's wrong with me? Okay. Now there's one for Doctor Drew. All right. Well, wait. A minute. Don't I get the answer? <laughs> Whoa, wow. (laughs) Dr. Drew. Yeah. Nocturnal emissions. Yeah. Are, uh, is it true that those are just, um, it's just an overproduction of sperm that needs to be emitted? Uh, not an overproduction, it's just a normal production that God releases for you. Yeah, you should be getting some of that out when you're inverted in the bathroom. (laughs) Oh, whoa. Too much fun. Good audience. Whoa. (laughs) So, so, Dr. Drew, the, uh, so, so for everybody in an explanation of nocturnal emissions when you wake up with your pants full of pud, right. for, for guys... Or for those of us who go to bed sober, our underpants. Yes. <laughs> no, I know, you, you, got a, you got a pair of 501s filled with something that uh. still got your boots on when you wake up in the morning. <laughs> Oh my God! Well, you've been as a few cigarette burns in the in the, uh, in the, in the machine. I'd like a, I like to I like to get a little window into uh, Michelle's life. First off, where'd you get that name, Michelle? Oh man, Michelle. Uh, <laughs> uh, it was either Mike or Michelle at birth. And I... This is this is a boy named Sue. Right, <laughs> they had one to toughen you up. Yeah. I knew he wasn't going to be around to look after you. I'm just bubbly and giggly now. now what, what do you What do you do for a living? What do you do for a living? Um, call you. No, Michelle. What do you do for a living? Uh, no, Doctor Drew's getting good now. What do you what do? Do, you do? Uh, what do I do? Dis- All right, disability. Nope, that's it. <laughs> Hang up. I I can only go uh, four rounds on the what do you do, and then when I hear the what do I do, and by the way, the what do I do came on the fourth. Third or fourth attempt. Yeah. yeah. Let me She's tell you about loaded, let me tell you the switch I have in my brain, everybody. It goes from I'm incredibly interested to uh, I give a rat's ass and just a heartbeat. 
I'll try Michelle one more time. Jim. Now, oh, I got rid of him. Good, good times. Paul, 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 sixteen. Is he sleeping? He's been oh, there he is. Whoa, for an hour. I hear him. Paul. Boring. All right. Did you hear something there? Well, Drew, whenever... See, here's what happens. Let me tell you the phenomenon. We're trying to hear if someone's sleeping or not. Anderson pots the guy <laughs> way up. You react and go, oh, I heard something. What you heard was Anderson potting the guy up. Maybe. That sort of... Uh, no, I know... But I usually ambient hear. sound went yeah, from... It, it, goes, it sounds like this. It goes from like sort of nothing to like... Yeah. yeah. And you go, oh, oh. I don't Maybe. think there's anything there. All right. No. Let's talk to Melanie. Hi. Hey, you're 22. What's up? Um, my mom is paranoid schizophrenic caused by prolonged meth use. Oof. And um, my question is, I have no idea how to help her. Um, I live in California, and she lives in Florida. Well, now, what do you mean by prolonged meth use? She, um, continues, well, to, she continues to use methamphetamine? Um, she used it from the time she was 20 on up to... I think she stopped when she was about 50. So 30 years. So 30 years. And, 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 right. and now she's chronically psychotic. Yeah. Yeah, which is what speed does. It's really not a paranoid schizophrenia. That's a specific oh. disease. She's got a thought disorder caused by the biological injury of the speed. Okay, that's just what her neurologist... Um, that well, that well um, this is probably putting it in terms okay. we could all understand. And okay. the, the scary thing about the paranoia that associated with speed, with a meth, uh -huh. is that the, the focus is always on important relationships so they're okay. paranoid that you or her neighbors or her co-workers are thinking about them and plotting against them as yeah. opposed to cocaine where the focus is always on uniformed officers the cocaine addicts is always looking out the window seeing police SWAT okay, teams she, did that. she she got the, well she's probably doing, maybe doing some cocaine too but the, the probably yeah but the the speed part is the focus on important people okay well wow. how'd well. you make it out of there um you know, I don't have an answer for that, but I'm doing well. Yeah, um, sounds like it. Yeah, I'm in college, my junior year of college. I'm in a great relationship, and... You're going to call I've never done drugs or anything like that. I uh -huh. guess it's just because I watched her, you know, be that way, and I would never want that for myself. Good. So. You, know, uh, you know what they call that? Uh, they call that being, being smart. Learning from experience. No, nah, it's just being smart. Yeah. Smart smart people study other people and go, yeah, that ain't for me. And then they see other people and they go, yeah, that's for me. That's and what they my do sister it. did. Yeah, my she, sister followed in her footsteps well, and changed, but... She's not so smart. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Drew don't like to do that, but I, I, really, I just break the world into dumb and stup stupid and then uh, smart and genius. Thank you. So you're doing all right. You want to know what to do with her. Yeah, because her neighbor called me today. Um, yeah, and I'm so far away that I can't go check right. up on her. And what did the I neighbor called, say? I'm sorry? What did the neighbor say? Um, she said that, you know, she was, my mother was hearing voices and that she was screaming out and... Um, Chandra, Chandra. <laughs> is, is she <laughs> off the speed? She's definitely off the speed. How do you know that? Um, she's so ill now that she can't even talk. I mean, she's had a heart attack, three yeah. strokes in a year. Mm. I, I, I really, I, I don't know how you do speed for more than a weekend. Yeah, wow. Well, I, I don't know how you do it for 30 years. Yeah. I, mean, I, re I really don't. It, it's, it's the awful. most, uh, it's, it's, it's really a drug that just, it's so hard on you. Yeah. There you go. And everyone around her, uh, or around you. So yeah. how long has she been sober? She's not sober. She just can't. She can't manage using. She's so impaired. Yeah, that's right. She didn't make a conscious effort. Yeah, just she just can't eating. do anything. But listen, is she not mm -hmm. taking her medicine? Is that what's happening now? Yeah, that's what the neighbor said. All right, okay. Does she, does she, really, you got to well, listen. I hate to say this, but you got to hire a drifter to kill her. No, no she may. <laughs> right, she's too big a burden on the she family. She may need a conservatorship, Melanie. You may need to go for that. Yeah, my and stepdad is supposed to be doing that. No, no, no. He's an alcoholic. Yeah, nice. He is. Uh, 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 hire, uh, give the uh, drifter an extra 150. He'll take care of stepdad, too. Yeah, yeah, He'll get the house. Go for the conservatorship. She probably has to be placed somewhere where she's in a structured living environment, gets her medicines, and is sort of contained. And that's it. Uh, she's so injured now. I mean, her brain's damaged badly now. Strokes, speed, it's, it's not good. Well, if she'd taken my drifter advice 10 years ago, then she'd be over it emotionally by now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
I'm just putting the word out in case any of my family is listening. So I'm to go on a, some kind of speed bender over what, the... What uh, if they decide to uh, turn your good advice on you? Hey, I pay... Well, first off, uh, they don't want to bite the hand that feeds them. <laughs> I pay the bills. You know what I'm saying? I take care of business. Don't worry about me. Sarah? Yes. You're 21? Yes. What's up? Um, my question really pertains to my boyfriend... Uh, I've been going out with him for a couple of years, and um, he does occasional prescription drugs, uh, Valium and Tramadol, and uh, more and more recently, he's been getting into ketamine, and uh, I'm kind of worried about him, not just because of the amount that he's using, but because he's a diabetic. Well, I get a uh, drifter to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you want to go 30 years with this pain, or want to just nip it in the bud? Well, I'm just, I mean, I, I'm not really concerned about whether or not we're going to be together for 30 years. I'm just concerned about him now, and I don't. Well, he's a drug addict, and he's diabetic, and addicts don't pay attention to the consequences of their drug use. In fact, that defines the disease. Continued use, progressive use, despite consequence. Uh, yeah, and it's the thing, he's, he's pre-med, you know, we're both in yeah. college. Hey, listen, and tons of, I treat tons of doctors who are addicts. Yeah, he kind of just thinks, you know, I research it enough, I know what I'm doing. That's BS. Look, he's an addict. And, uh, you know, it's going to progress, and it's going to get worse, and when he's ready to do something, he will. Wait, uh, meanwhile, you can lay down some rules, like you're not going to be with him if right. he's going to do this. Loss usually is the only thing that catches these people's attention. Well, are there specific, like, side effects for diabetics? I mean, is, is it for uh, a situation than normal normal? Well, it depends if he's brittle. Is he well-controlled? Is there, is it, is, does he have any complications of his diabetes? Uh, no complications. He's really well-controlled, actually. Well, uh, and he's using ketamine and what else? Ketamine, tramadol. He steals, like, Ambien and Valium from his mom. He's going to make, a, make, a, make a hell of a doctor yeah, one yeah. day. He's going to be a mess. Well, no, these are all not specifically uh, that I can see extra dangerous. Tramadol. What the hell is that? I've heard of that one. Tramadol. Tramadol. It's a painkiller? What is that tramadol? Is that Ultram? Uh, no, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's tramadol. It's it's a European painkiller. I don't think it's legal on this huh, state. Interesting. Oh. Well, I mean, this is, you know, o presumably opiates that he's using, and this is profound addiction. Benzodiazepines, profoundly addictive. He, he's not, you know, he's going to have consequence. And I suggest you go to Al-Anon or some sort of codependency recovery program, and uh, that will give the highest likelihood of helping him, nothing yeah. else. And, uh, don't, don't throw out the uh, drifter suggestion just yet. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Just keep that in your back pocket. Annabelle? Hi. Hey, you're 16. What's up? Okay, I've been giving my boyfriend head, like, for the past month. Like, yeah. that's, like, when I started doing it for him. Mm -hmm. And, like, every single time, almost, mm -hmm. that I do it, like, afterwards, I like, go to the bathroom, like, I need the mouthwash and stuff, and I, like, throw up. Cause <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm, like, right. We gotta, we gotta get Drifter to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> now, wouldn't, uh, let's, let's be empathetic with this young lady. Wouldn't you throw up, too, Adam? Oh, me? Yeah. Think about it. Would I? Yeah. I've, I've th I mean, uh, hypothetically, sure. Yes, I would vomit if I got uh, semen in my mouth. Yeah, so, okay. And, like, I thought I'd be used to it by now because I'm doing it, like, a lot. How, oh how, how many times do you think you've done it? God bless you, by the way. Oh, my God. Keep, keep uh, going back to the well, as well, it were. Trooper. I can't just be like, oh, no. How many times? In the past month. Have you vomited? Like, <laughs> probably, like, 17. Oh, my God. So that's not good for you. Well, this become a uh, a nice uh, method of weight loss for you. Does he understand you're vomiting? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. You had bulimia? Yeah. Oh, boy. Mm. Is this part of that, do you think? Uh, I don't know. But, like, mm. I just... Wait a minute. Hold on. Let me talk to Drew. Yeah. I was I was kidding, but I may have inadvertently stumbled onto something here, yeah. which well, is... Bulimics will vomit more easily, and sort of, it can kind of blur... You know what's bulimia, what's vomiting? Reaction to something physiologic. They, they'll start vomiting all kinds of things, and they kind of go with it a little bit. Well, look at it this way: we we talk to uh, drug addicts all the time, people that are hooked on painkillers. So they're hooked, yep. and so their back says, "Hey, I got some pain. Right. Feed me. Right. Feed Same. me. Yeah. <laughs> right. Feed me." And after a while, the line is so blurred, you don't know if you're actually having pain, or your brain right. is just creating pain, so it can be rewarded That's right. with some painkillers that it wants. That's exactly right. Now you got an eating disorder. Now That's here you are, and we're both sitting here going, "Geez, you vom vomited seventeen times last month." Just you keep doing you know, it. Last month you keep doing it. What? 
I, I you know, initially we want to, you know, want to send her out a windbreaker and, you know, trooper of the year, but now it's, now it starts, as it, it starts to unfurl a little bit, it starts to take a little different shape. So, uh, maybe there is something here. But just, like, I'm just, like, disgusted by it every time. Yes, like, we I'm got like, that oh, part. No, right. we got that part. Any excuse right. to vomit. <laughs> wow, what an what incredible... Like, counseled the hell out of me, so I'd stop, and I, like, don't like that anymore. And I was like, ooh, that's so gross. Sort who, of who counseled you? Hmm? What did you say? Someone counseled you? Well, like, they, like, you know, I had to go to, like, therapy, and, like, everyone found out, and I was like, oh, great, you know? From... Semen vomiting? No, for making herself vomit when uh, she had bulimia, her eating disorder. Okay. Yeah. Now so now you have found, a reason to vomit. And but meanwhile, her what? A, what a great vicious cycle to be caught in up as a, as a boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. Your penis becomes her enabler. That's right. crazy. Be like, no, I won't. Wow. How old is this guy? Seventeen. And are you guys having intercourse? Never. Just the oral sex. Yeah, Gee. and that's like the only thing we ever do. He never does anything. Well, right, you got to vomit. Hmm? He, you're the only, you, you know, it must be incredible for this guy because this guy's like, geez, she blew chow like on Tuesday and now it's uh, Wednesday and she's dying to go down on me. Well, all right, so be it. I'm never exactly dying to, but he's always like, come on. And I'm just like, okay, fine. I'm not going to be like, no, I don't feel like it. Why don't you be Why like, not? hey, you're vomiting. Yeah. But no, uh, I puke every time we do this. I can't do that anymore. Because then he'll be like, oh, you're so stupid, and he'll get mad at me about it. This is this is that, you're such a whore. This is that same reaction right. that you hear is something different. Yeah, I, like, I think you've... Out since, like, February, and, like, I only started doing this, like, a month ago. So hey, but look, if he gives a good goddamn about you, he'll, like, have some sympathy for what you're going through. <laughs> when did you get your... When did you finish your bulimia counseling? Um... Well, I'm still having to go to, like, the school. Well, I'm not the school one anymore, but, like, All right. I stopped in, like, January. Well, you're still in bulimia. It's just instead of sticking your finger down your throat, you're sticking a penis down your throat. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Hey, that's heavy. <laughs> that's heavy, man. But, like, wouldn't I still be doing it if I was that into it? Like, after the whole bulimia bout, that was, like... You're not done with the bulimia. You're still bulimic. You're using a guy's penis. Even though... I was like, I stopped doing that like completely in like January. No, you haven't stopped doing it. This is the point. You had seventeen you more relapses for, uh, for a period, and now you're using this guy as an excuse. Yeah. But why would it only happen then? It, that's, first off, that's all you're doing, and you're doing a lot of it. Yeah. And the point is, if you just hated it, you probably wouldn't do it. You just stop it. There'd be no second. Why do you think we were so confused as to why you kept doing it so much when you're vomiting each and every time? All right, let, hold on. But look, let, let's. You don't want him to get mad, no, please. Yeah. You're, you're. Listen, he can I, be vicious about it. Well, then, that's well, hold on. Let's talk about that for a second. But when you guys go to, you guys go to movies. Sometimes. Do you only go to the movies he wants to see? Sorta, because he pays for it. So every time, what was the last three movies you guys went to? The Fast and the Furious. Well, that's his, yeah. <laughs> Tomb Raider. Oh, it's his, too. Yeah, it's too. And, um, um, Pearl Harbor. Oh, all right. What's the matter with you? Can't, you can't speak up for yourself. That's the real problem here. What What is with your self-esteem that is that, that poor? And you have an older sister. <laughs> no, I have Not that sister. much older. Huh? I have a twin sister and an older sister. Sweet. Sure. Yeah, what is up, baby? What do you mean? Like well, you're, you're scared. Boy? This guy, this sixteen-year-old guy's running you ragged. You got an eating disorder. What's going on? Well, I don't have an eating disorder anymore. Oh yes. Well, first of all, people those don't remit. They're they're chronic conditions that sort of get better and come back. And yours is active right now. Hey Anna, why don't you know you're going to therapy for the old eating disorder that you don't have anymore? Except for you still vomit all the time. Yes. Uh, I think you need to bring up all yes. this power stuff yes, and yes. all this. And that you this, can't assert yourself. He's going to get you, mad at me if I don't blow him. Right. You, you need some assertiveness. Put that on a card, Anderson. S That'll be good. Yeah. Yes. Some assertiveness skills. No. Good. Drew was talking. So. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't that one. No. You were talking, so it's no good. Lisa? Hello. You're 18? Mm -hmm. No, What's wasn't. up? I was not. Uh, shut no, up. He's got it. He's got it. All right. He's, the, he's got it. I mean, shut up. <laughs> Lisa? Yes. I like you already. <laughs> What's going on? Hi. Um, I've had a problem with, like, I don't know, guys, but um, I just got out of a two-year relationship, and mm -hmm. he was really, really controlling. And I don't know. It's just like I met this other guy, and 
he treats me so well, I just, like, am not used to it. And so, I, like, I don't know. I'm like, so what you do is you take the really nice guy and you start moving over in that direction to prove to the guy who's treating you badly that you will leave if he doesn't treat you better. I, except, I, except, the, except the guy that's nice is too boring and you won't actually go with him. You go back to the guy that treats you like crap and he'll keep treating you like crap. Yeah, um, well, he found out that I was seeing this other guy. Oh, magical. Magically. Oh, yeah. Magically he found out. And he was like, well, is he better than me and all this? And, and it was like, I didn't know what to say. And he was better, and we I haven't stopped seeing him. It was it's, That's not the problem. The, uh, the guy I was with for two years isn't the problem. It's the fact that he treated me really bad, and now I'm with someone that treats me really good, and I can't get over that. And so, can't get over what? The way he treats me. It's like, the, I'm like... The good guy? Yeah, I'm like, number one, I'm always before him. Yeah. And... What? what? Listen... Uh, I drove crappy cars that lived in crappy apartments and ate crappy food. Now I drive nice cars. Uh, I still eat crappy food. I live in a nice house. Uh, it's easy. Easy to get over. One was bad. The other's good. Yeah, but when Done. you cycle for two years, it's really hard. No, Lisa. No, you know, it's not. You, know, you need the abuse is the problem. You, got, gonna, you got some serious yeah, issues. Yeah, and you're going to sabotage the, the good relationship because you can't stand the intimacy. <laughs> why, why is it so hard to deal with a guy who puts you first? Does all because those things... My dad... Uh, he what? My dad beat me when I was... Right. There you go. Thank you. Thank you for not making us dig for that. Thank you. And thank, thank you. your dad for being... No. No. Uh, how about a little therapy then? I've been through therapy. Well, not through it. I, I, I think it's an ongoing thing, especially when your dad beat you. And especially since you're unable to tolerate being in a real relationship. You can't tolerate it. You can't no, tolerate tenderness. I'm asking, I'm asking, what can I do to keep this other guy? I mean, what can I... I mean, because I'm always wanting to be with him. I'm always calling him, and it, like, gets on his nerves. And he said I was smothering him, and... Which guy are you smothering? The good guy. You're smothering the good guy. Because I'm always wanting to be with him, always. Interesting. Now, both Drew and I have that uh, unpuzzled look on our face. <laughs> smothering him. And he's a real good guy. Yeah, I mean... Uh, real good guys, the kind of good guy that Drew and I are thinking about, aren't worried about being smothered. Right, they don't say They that. like being smothered. Right. They're like a hot dog, just waiting for something to be dumped right. on. Right. While the not-so-good guys start pushing you away. How good a guy is this so-called well, good like, guy? He is, well, like, because I have, like, a low self-esteem. No mm. kidding. <laughs> Thanks. No, but that's what we're talking about here, Lisa. That's, that's what needs to be changed. And um, and by the way, if you were if you were if you were through therapy, there would not be such low self esteem. You'd have a medium low self esteem medium, like yeah. we have after well, years of therapy. Low medium. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're aware of it. What 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 about this good guy? How old is he? He's twenty four. Ooh, twenty four well, with the twenty three. Yep. Yeah. The guy that. Well, what's the twenty four year old guy do? He works for American Airlines. Yeah, I'm doing what? Um, he works on the computers. It's like okay. Like bring up All right, computers. and and can can you control yourself? Then you know what you're doing. Yeah, I think it's like a main like like a fact infatuation, but I don't know how to get over it. Well, that, you don't oh, now hold hold on a second. I uh, you don't need to get minute. over it if it's this, she is the uh, the subtle riddler. Yeah, yeah. Because she's talking about one guy clearly, but the terms she uses and the words she chooses would imply that she's talking about the old guy. Right, right. You know, it's an infatuation. I don't know how to get over It seems like she's going to call and say, here's what we're prepared for, Drew. And I, you and I are on the same page here. She, she's calling and saying, like, I was with this old guy. I was really abusive. I broke things off. I found a really great guy, and I don't know what to do with this old guy. I keep thinking about him. I can't get away from him. I'm infatuated with him. The new and, guy. We keep thinking, though, she's talking about the, the, the old guy. guy. That's right. what the energy feels like. But, but what, like. you know what's going to happen is it's going to be, i got to stop this, and then magically when she does, she just drift back to the old guy. So this is really still about the old guy. Well, yes. Uh, stay with this new guy. Go ahead and smother him. Go ahead and smother him. Try to control yourself and get back into therapy. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Listen, yeah. fine. Or don't. I, listen, I don't care. I go home at 12. That's it. And you, you guys who uh, think I uh, think about uh, you? Okay, Adam. Uh, okay. 
Oh, you on. folks who think I'm uh, haunted by you when I get home, are you kidding? I turn that TV on, I put my feet up, I don't even know what job I have anymore. I am like a uh, an animal that way. I, I turn on the TV, I think I'm actually in whatever show I'm watching. You understand that? But I, let, let's talk about advice in general. If no. advice were really easy, you, you'd be doing it. If, if it's a path of least resistance, you'd already be doing it. Whatever advice we're going to give you, you probably you're going to resist and not want to hear. Otherwise, you'd already be doing it. Okay. Back to therapy. We'll be back. <laughs> Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Let's pop back on those phones. Let's attack those phones, Drew. Right. Let's see if we can help some more people. Hmm? You. What do you say there, buddy? Yeah. Here we go now. Let's go now. Hmm. Let's go. Becky? Yes. 21. Let's go now. All right. All right. Hi. I just want to say that I totally love you guys, and I know everybody always says that, but I just want to say it. Thanks. All right, Becky. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Um, so, okay. So I have this friend. I met him about four months ago. And since we've known each other, we've been totally inseparable. We see each other, like, every single day. If we don't see each other, we talk to each other on the phone. All of my friends say, why aren't you guys together? All of his friends say, why aren't you guys together? Um, one night we were at a party and we were totally drunk, so they strategically placed us on a futon together when everybody went to bed to see if anything would happen. And, yeah, stuff it's like did. mixing a couple of chemicals together. <laughs> right. Yeah, whatever. And they put you together in the Petri dish, yes, and? Yeah, pretty much. So they, what happened? We just kind of hooked up a little bit. We didn't, like, you know, go all the way or anything. Sure. But right. we just kind of, you know, messed around and stuff. Right. And then after I... It turns out he was so drunk that he didn't remember. Hmm. Or yeah. he says he doesn't right. remember. Right. Yeah. Um, but I had to explain it to him the next day. <laughs> I'm all, yeah, last night stuff happened. And he's like, what are you talking about? I'm all, stuff happened between me and you. And he's like, oh... He's like, well, I'm not going to have that mess up, you know, mess us up because we hooked up at a party or whatever. Yeah. And so ever since then, we've still been, you know, cool and everything, hanging out every day. We mm. tell each other, like, everything. Becky, Becky, you are you are into this guy in a big way. So much so, you don't even know. <laughs> yeah, and you better tell him that. Well, he knows. No, he doesn't. Yes, he, no, I he doesn't. Him. You told him? I told him, yeah, I love you. You're my best friend. I told him, like... The first two weeks that we knew each other, we would drive around for like hours and hours and talk about everything. And finally, I just said, you know what? I'm not going to say his name because just in case he's listening. <laughs> I was just like, you know what? I like you. And I've been pretty obvious about it. And he goes, well, I totally love to date you and all that kind of stuff. But I don't want to complicate our friendship right now. And that's it. The g case closed. Not that into it. That was a long time ago. Yeah. yeah well, he, ma better. he managed to. No, guys don't do that. <laughs> he managed to keep it back into the friend category. And you accepted that. And that's where he wants to keep it. But that was like three and a half months ago. You're overweight. Yeah. Right. True, and the, and that, that is more evidence of how entrenched in Friendville you are. Okay, but then listen, I stay the night at his house. Yeah. And we sleep in the same bed. And he lets you blow him. Okay, no, but that is not what happened. Yes, you gave him a BJ. <laughs> BJ. Okay, listen. Saturday night, it's Saturday night. This last Saturday, I stayed the night, and stuff ended up happening, and we still haven't talked about it. And then the next night, we always go to the movies on Sunday nights, and the next night, um, he brought the, another girl, this other girl that's like my oh. competition or whatever. Your competition. All yeah. right. Well, you've, you've proven your point once yeah. and for all. <laughs> Becky, Becky. Are you uh, pre-law? Oh, what, no. what are you studying for? Communication. Oh. Hey, your Honor, my client is, uh, well, he's guilty. <laughs> uh, let's, uh, let's eat. <laughs> No. Okay, you, listen, you're, you did give him some oral sex on Saturday, though. Yeah. yeah. Then on yeah. Sunday, brought your arch nemesis. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's a, that's a loud message to you, Becky. Oh, well, man. No, but see, I'm, now my problem <laughs> is yeah. I'm wondering if there's something that I'm doing. Like, am I putting out, like, uh, no. friend no. no, Becky. No. This happened to no. me before. No, no Becky, no. Becky, Becky. Becky, Becky, no. Becky, Becky, <laughs> Becky, 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 we he, feel so bad he, for you. He is not interested and, in you that you, way. You can't make him go to that place. He's never, he's never been interested in you that way. But he says stuff all the time. Nope. I would rather nope. Becky. With you. <laughs> yeah, he says stuff because you bring stuff up. No, no, no. We were yes, yes, yes. Becky, Becky, Becky. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Becky, 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 Becky. Yes, yes, Becky, Becky, Becky. Okay, he ain't interested. Screw Becky. Screw ball. 
Yes, you're thick. No, no, she's thick. not thick. She's I'm she's totally twenty. Normal. Yeah, I agree. She's, a, she's in love, yes. and she will not accept the truth. Yes, which is this guy ain't. Well, explain, interested. explain, Becky. Listen, to Adam, for a second. How would a guy were behave if he were into this? He be would have been on it. You know, the two weeks. First off, you would have never got to the point where you had the discussion where you liked him. Because he would have been on you immediately. Yeah. What What is it? You know, the guy. And then, he's never really had a girlfriend. Hold on. Well, I, I've been wondering if he's gay. That's one of the things running through my mind. But that, that's gay? that. That's a possible explanation. No, he. You know, he's, but I don't he's think a so. nice guy. He's uh, he likes a BJ, and he likes Becky, but he's not attracted to Becky. Right. Thinks Becky's a great person. It's not really just not attracted to you. Well, then why does stuff keep happening? But because, because you come over and offer to blow him. Offer. Well, you make yourself you make yourself available. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, Beck, you know what the truth is. Please don't argue with us. You're wasting if, your time. If you if you thought for a second he really liked you, you'd be working on that. You wouldn't be trying to convince us so you we can make you feel better about something that you know is the truth. If the guy was He's really into her and, and he was sleeping in the same bed with her, and think about that. Look, here's the way it would have worked. Forget about meeting up the next night for a movie. Oh, but had no. sex all Saturday right. night. That's right. He would have made you a nice big fat uh, omelet the next morning. And then you guys would have uh, ridden around on bicycles with baskets on the front. While, <laughs> while, uh, a, uh, a, 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 while the uh, fifth dimension played in the background. And what would, he, what would the bubble be over his head? He would have just uh, love, you know, Penny for your thoughts, all that stuff. He, he's not into her. Screw Beggy. <laughs> He's not into her. Sorry. Becky, stop wasting your time. I know. Hey, I'm so sorry for her. I, I do. And here, here's the sad part. All you girls and all you guys, especially you girls... What am I doing wrong? I mean, you he seems uh, to. What am I doing wrong? Yeah. I, I, you know, you know. I say to him, and he says he wants this kind of person, and I tell him I'm that kind of person, and we totally click. Uh -huh. And he doesn't like this other, but he says he doesn't like this other kind. But yet he's always with him. What am I doing wrong? When I think I'm scaring him away. Mm. I, you know what I'm doing? I'm coming on too strong. He's not. He's getting a mixed message from. No, 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 no. If he's interested, he's in. Look, everybody, guys. Let me explain, guys. Guys send away for wives <laughs> to other countries. Forget about clicking. What are you doing wrong? Right. G guy open a magazine, see a chick, point at the chick, yeah. and happily be with her. Yep. Forget about what you're doing to, to steer him away. Especially a 22, 23-year-old guy. Whatever that it is has to be there. And he ain't into it. Anna? This is me. 22, what's up? Um, well, I haven't had sex in almost three years. And wow. I don't masturbate. Nice. And You're I want so badly to just wake up and be married and have that all done with, but it just seems so hard to, like, meet guys and date, you know? What is up? Mm. I don't know. I've looked everywhere. I've looked, I've done the whole bar thing. I've done the whole church thing. I've done, looked at work. Just doesn't seem to be anybody. I have even met guys at the grocery store. Have you had a boyfriend? No, I haven't for three years. I've How come? I don't She's know. She's done the whole thing. What happened with the last one? Um, actually, I have two kids. Oh, there yeah. we go. Oh, yeah. Here we go. And my daughter's dad is the last person that I was with. Yeah. So you, these guys have been real assholes, ass ass, yeah. ass heads yeah. to you. Yeah. Yeah. My so dad. so that's why it's not working out. You're scared to death that this is all going to happen again. Is that what it is? That so, I'm going to get pregnant? And well, then you're going you're gonna to get a, yeah, some idiot's going to, yeah, somebody's going to abandon you again, which is probably the kind of guy you're attracted to. Same dad? No. Bo both kids? No. No. Well. My son's dad's married, and he still sees him, and we get along, and my dad's daughter's got his head so far up his ass, he can't see the light of day. Your so we don't, we don't talk to him. Daughter's Your daughter's dad, dad right? But it's right. interesting. We don't twist on words there. Two <laughs> different, uh, Two different guys, huh? Yeah. Is well, the second one sort of like your dad? Um, no, my dad, actually, I didn't really like my dad as I was growing up. But my parents were married. Everything was normal. Did and he... now that I realize that's who I want. I want somebody that's exactly like my dad because my dad was so loving to my mom. Why didn't you like your dad? Uh, I don't know. He had his head kind of up his ass, too? He was grumpy. Yeah, he was grumpy. Man, yeah, what a great guy. Really? Yeah. I mean, just because he didn't divorce your mom and didn't beat her didn't mean he was a great guy. No, my dad, oh, no. 
I think my mom controlled the relationship a little bit, but my dad would do anything for my mom. Yeah, but not for you. Um, probably not at this point. Well, you just said he had his no, head up. I, don't, I mean, growing up, screwball. Yeah, he would do it. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. you said he... But I, I don't know. For a guy who's loved your mom very much and would do anything for you, you don't sound very appreciative. Yeah, you said he has his head up his ass. No, my daughter's dad. Ah, okay. Man, you didn't didn't sound like you were too nuts about your dad either, though. I love him. He mm. lives far away, though, now. Okay, thanks. <laughs> so, wait. Hi. Uh, hey, let me ask you a question. Let me talk to Drew for a second. Mm. Has there been some sort of uh, experimental military program where they've taught animals to talk? <laughs> That I'm well, not aware of. As Joe Rogan said. Is that what's going well, listen, on out Joe, there? When Joe Rogan, two weeks ago, was up here, I, yeah. he said something I thought was very astute. He goes, uh, hey, we're just monkeys who talk. That's it. Monkeys who talk. Mm. <laughs> he should talk about <laughs> monkeys who talk. <laughs> that's right. I thought that was pretty astute. But, but listen, I, I mean, I'm picturing some sort of military experiment that went awry where the animals got over the fence and now they're calling the show in. Yeah, I think that's, uh, yeah. Hey, you like your dad? Yes. He lives far away. <laughs> Yeah, but growing up, what, what kind of guy to, he, well, not now. <laughs> now, I, really about her dad, she's, she's told me that he was a good guy, that he loved her mother very much, and he was a little bit grumpy, and she wasn't crazy about him. But then as soon as I questioned that, it immediately got into the present tense where he lived far away. <laughs> I'm going to try this one more time, but oh my God, <sighs> poor Anna over here. Anna. I'm here. Like, please be be um, uh, forthcoming. Be more forthcoming. Uh, your dad, growing up, he was a good dad to you. He was. I just didn't realize it. Okay. Well, so no, wait, no, wait of, a minute. There's no such thing as that. I, no, I, I mean, but judging by the guys you hooked up, he was a saint. The the guys who uh, fathered your kids. Right. Right. But. Growing up, you weren't that fond of your dad, right? No, I was rebellious, and I okay. I hated him then. Why? I don't know. Okay, well, there's something very, very serious there. And when, that's where all this energy is being funneled into your peers. Yeah, when you get to the answer of why you hated your dad for no reason growing yeah. up, it's going to help you meet a guy in your current adult yeah, state. There's not no reason for hatred, Okay. Okay. Right. I mean, you can be rebellious, and a kid can be rebellious, but hating, be angry, hating but your dad for dad? no reason yeah. is, is kind of weird, and I bet that has to do with why you can't meet a guy now, or sure. at least the right guy. And what about the masturbation? Why don't I do that? Uh, I, I, I have no idea, Anna, but there's more issues uh, than meets the ear with you. Yeah. I would assume, right? Yeah. And so I think it's time, uh, on, on behalf of your children... Because you, you, you don't want to pull a number on your kids. You don't want to screw them up like your parents did to you, right? Yeah. How about a little therapy, a little soul searching, reading a few books, <laughs> keep paying attention? You know what I mean? I yeah. hate to say it. Watch Oprah a little bit. Mm. When that uh, big bald Texan guy gets on there and starts uh, talking about uh, what's going wrong, listen to him. Listen to this show. What if your dad... Pick, pick up some knowledge. Dad may have done a little something. Okay. You think your dad... May have, uh, like, molested you and you didn't know it? No. Actually, I've never been molested. But no. That was a strange way to answer that question, wasn't it? Yeah, Anna, you have a weird, suspicious way of answering yeah. <laughs> almost every question. Yeah. Did, did he hit you? Um, when I was older, like 14 and 15. All right, that's pretty serious right there. And we wonder if he did something else, touched you, or was inappropriate with you in some way, maybe when you were younger, too, that sort of created that distrust and the I powerlessness. I think it was sexual, but I, I guess when I was a kid, he spanked us with a belt, too. All right. That's, that's physical abuse, okay? Yeah. All right. So you get very minimum physical abuse. Very minimum. And by the way, that's the kind of guy that perpetrates physical abuse on young girls. Think, right. about, think about striking your kids with a belt for a second, Anna. No. Not unless they were asking for it. <sighs> and everyone's asking for it. That's the way I look at it. Even if they're not actually asking for it. We'll take a break. We'll be back. Hey, everybody. Woo-wee. Hoo-lord. Hoo-lord. Hick-a-brr. 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 All right, here we go. Yeah. Let's rock here, Drew. Chrissy. Yes? 19. Uh-huh. You're a virgin? Yes. And it's difficult to stay that way in college. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. I've made it like two years now, going on 20 next month, and it just seems like it's getting harder and harder. What's up with your phone? Oh, it's a cell phone. Uh, you, you have a land phone you can get on? Well, she have to hang up to do that. What's she going to yeah. do? Nah, I don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't mind yeah. if she hung up. <laughs> I'm looking for excuses. Okay, look, you, what, are you a religious person? No, actually, that's not it at all. I don't know. I think it's just been the wrong guy, and now, like, I've... Um, oh, the, the goddamn phone line's driving me nuts. Look, you're a virgin. You're fine. Stay with it. God bless. God speed. Good, no, 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 good times. Good times. Good times. <laughs> Frank? Uh, yeah. You're 18? How you doing? Good. Um, Dr. Drew, you're cool. Um, Adam, you're Thank you. Too. Thank you, buddy. What's up? Um, I just had a problem. Like, my girlfriend, uh, we've been going out for like nine months now, and like her f whole family situation is like really bad. She's suffering from like depression mm -hmm. and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, um, the other day I noticed like all these cuts on her wrist. Mm -mm. And it's just, you know, it's getting worse and worse and worse. She's a cutter. And she's just telling me like, you know, like she doesn't even feel anymore. She's just like numb. Well, yeah. okay. all right. What's the question? She's well, she's got very very serious problems. Yeah, very. Like, what do I you know? What do I do? Is like mm -hmm. I talk to her and like um, make sure the people that sh that take care of her see her regularly. Yeah, but that's the problem. Like, um, her family, like her her parents, have like totally cut her off from like um, like kind of like everybody outside. Like, they won't let me see her. They won't oh, let her oh, friends see her. Yes. Like, it's her mom's like like Filipino, and she's like kind of like immigrant, and so she's like she's not real. She's nuts. I mean, she's just like nuts. Is she getting no help? She's getting none. I mean, like... Okay. Can you like, tell Can you tell counselor at school? I, I, we did. And, like, she doesn't want to go because, like, well, we did, and she was going. And, um, like, what happened was they couldn't do anything for her. Like, the family counseling, it wasn't helping. Like, she like she didn't get anywhere. Can you so. can you have a talk with her mom? Uh, me? Me? No, I'm going to go over there and talk to her. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, like, <laughs> do you, like no way, no. No, no. Her mom's, like, it's just, I mean, her dad's, like, the biggest puss. And, like, they're not going to do anything for her. Mm. And, I mean, all this stuff is, like, it's like a cry for help, you know? Yeah, hey, look, I, it sounds like you two ought to break up and you just worry about her health. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah no, well, I'm, I'm totally, like, I'm just concerned for her. Like, I, you right. know, I really yeah. care for her and I, I love it, her. It, it's tough because uh, you can't uh, infiltrate that uh, family yeah, circle. I mean, and it's a, it's a mess. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, she's underage. She's 17. Maybe I ought to call uh, Child Protective Services. I mean, she's She's... You know, essentially suicidal, and they're seeking no help for her. She has no caretakers. Is that what he said? He's saying, Frank. Yeah, she, she has like like mom and dad, everything like that, right? But no, but no psychiatric care. Yeah, no, nothing. Well, then you, you got you got to alert the local authorities. If you see her cutting herself, you got to tell someone. That's it. I, somebody's got to intervene on her behalf. I would really go talk to the school counselors one more time, explain yeah. the situation. Yeah, so if you can get the school people involved, yeah, sure. Let them, you know... Handle it. Right. Yeah, that's not your job. Sc Scott? Scott? Yeah, I'm here. You're 33, what's yeah, up? Yeah, what's up? What's up? Uh, I just have trouble with my girlfriend, tries to beat me up. Yeah? Hang what? on one second, I'm going to go to the other room, okay? All right. Mm, Scott, take your lithium. I like to kick Scott's ass. <laughs> <laughs> talk to him for 12 seconds. I want to go over there and smack him one. Scott? What's up with your girlfriend? Uh, we're just, um, we have trouble. She likes to, we get into arguments, and she likes, they said she takes it out. She'd like to beat me up. Well, right, why so. don't you break up with her? Right. Well, that's what, you know what? That's the guy, the upper that told me the same thing. Right. So, I love her. He's a genius. But I love her. Mm. I do. What's yeah. her nationality? She's Italian. Yeah, they're feisty. They, yeah, they are. They're hot. You, you, that's right. They we got, have the bomb they, they together, got, too. They got fire in nah, their blood. They have good sex. That's her thing. Scott, I, I bet, you know what, though? I bet when things start escalating, you're you're playing along too. Oh sure, you got to diffuse the situation. Do you understand? You know, I I hear you. I understand. I tried to go in another room, lock myself, get away from her. Yeah, yeah. That's after things are going already. Yeah, yeah. But Don't let them get escalating. A lot of people though, they they're so used to being in aggressive family systems that they just I understand. express themselves that Scott, way. Scott, if you really would like this to go away, here's what you have to do. The next time this happens, you say, "Look, that's it." You, you put her on. You put her. On put her on hold. Yeah. You tell if this ever happens again, that's it. Yeah. You got to be prepared to walk. Yeah. That's yeah. the only way you can clear a any. Look, yeah. anytime somebody's doing some behavior that's reprehensible you or that doesn't work go. for you, yeah. you have to first be prepared to go. Yep, I agree with you. It, you pansy. It, you know what it's like? It's like when you go in and ask for a raise. Mm -hmm. 
or you tell your boss or or whoever, look, this is what I need. Yeah. This is the position I need. This is the title I need. Before you walk into that office, make sure you got in your head. You're ready to walk. If this person, line up your ducks emotionally, financially, whatever it is, be ready to walk if this person does not comply. We'll be back. Well, there you go. Another fantabulous episode of Love Line, safely in the earth. I want to thank uh, everyone who made this show possible. I'll name them by name on Thursday when I have more time <laughs> and more energy. <laughs> so until next time, this is Adam Corolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Got to, got to, got to, got to love the Love Line. This has been Love Line. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.